Hey guys, uh, Carstio72 here with another video coming live uh, today from the KCE, the Car Center of Excellence, which is my garage. Um, hey guys, like and subscribe to my videos, my channel. Appreciate any help you can throw me. I'm trying to be helpful uh, for the kind of Volkswagen slash track community. So uh, yeah, go ahead and what do they say? Smash the like and hit the subscribe, whatever. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about brakes because... Uh, in about a week and a half, I'm going to be going down to VIR for my first track uh, HPDE for the year. It's a three-day event with a time trial on the first day, uh, kind of a for-fun time trial, and then two HPDE days. This is with Tidewater Sports Car Club. I really like those guys and go to their events. Um, but I do need to swap out. My last thing to do is every event I flush or bleed my brakes, and then I swap in my track compound pad. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. So first off, um, I just use the kind of venerable Motul RBF 600. A lot of people use this. You can see I have a date on it. I used it uh, for a different vehicle I have back in February. Um, generally, you want to write that on there and probably not use this once you get out to a year. Some people have done testing to show moisture content really doesn't change much if you put the top on it. Um, I'm not worried about three months, uh, but... You know, you, don't, you, you generally want to use fresh brake fluid because the, the high temperature stuff like this, the DOT4 stuff, will absorb moisture. It's high groscopic. That's what that means. Um, I get this stuff from FCP Euro. It's 20 bucks a bottle. And then, of course, you can return your used stuff with the lifetime return guarantee. So it's pretty hard not to just use this kind of fluid, this basic stuff, which does work for me. I do note, though, that, and others have noted it, after a week, a long, sorry, during a weekend, uh, I will notice some pedal feel difference. It's not, I don't have fade, I don't have boiling, I don't have any drama. The pedal feel changes just slightly. And a lot of people that have switched over to the high-end fluids like the Willwood XR or the Endless is a popular one or Castrol SRF, those fluids tend to not do that. They're also a lot more money and you don't have to bleed them as often. Those fluids are generally good for like a year to go. Um, I basic this stuff is cheap and easy to get, so I buy three bottles at a time, and I just do it a bleed every track event. In fact, for three days, I'll probably bleed it during the event. It's so easy to do. Um, but anyway, that's the fluid I use here. I talk about my track pads that I've been on to. Um, these are you can't really see because they're, they're stainless steel backed EBC RPX. So this is for my APR big brake kit. They use a a pad shape that's shared among uh, other brake kits, OEs, I think there's a Subaru, it's a WRX STI, there's an AMG Mercedes, um, there is a uh, Maserati, is it Maserati, not Maserati, um, Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia, um, and there's like a Lexus. So it's pretty easy to find pads, you just use those cars to look it up, or once you know these numbers, you can, these pad numbers over here, you can sometimes cross-reference things. But these are a big brake kit pad. Actually, they're not really any bigger than if you have a, a Mark 7 Volkswagen that has the 340, the performance pack front brakes. These are basically the same size dimensionally. They're not really any bigger. Um, but they're, you know, this is what fits my kit. Um, these have about uh, just shy of 10 millimeters of friction compound. A lot of times OE brakes have more. So uh, you get a little lower uh, thickness here with big brake kit pads. Uh, often, but you know, the idea is you've got three pistons pushing on it, you get more even wear and they dissipate or manage heat better. So you, your wear rates, uh, will be lower than a, than a typical, uh, for the same pad, uh, for a typical single piston sliding caliper. But, um, okay. So EBC, these are RPX. They're a high torque track compound. So a lot of people hear EBC and go, Oh my God, my brother's sister's cousin used EBC and nearly died on the track. And you read it online. Um, and of course, what you're not hearing is the dumbass used a street compound pad, uh, right or wrong or whatever they were told that these pads were, but they use street compound pads on the track and they fall apart. Well, just about anybody's pads that are those compounds will fall apart under those conditions. So EBC does in fact make track pads. These are RP, racing pad. They also make an SR line, centered racing pads, um, which I really like to try. Apparently they last forever or awesome. Um, they're going to be more money. These pads I get from buybreaks.com. They're about $225 with a readily available coupon. Um, and 
you know, for 225 though, I'm going to get just a couple weekends out of these is basically what it's shown. I've got fresh ones to drop in for this event because it's three days. I have a half-worn set roughly, half, a little more than half that I'll use for like a single day to get the rest of the use out of them. A lot of people recommend uh, getting rid of these pads once they hit the backing plate thickness, which on these is I think like five and a half millimeters. So you basically only get half the pad if you really do it that way. Um, and so pads like this that don't last as long because they're less money, you know, you're going to be changing pads more often, but you're only paying two twenty five. The really, typically the really, really good in long lasting endurance pads like Pagids, uh, Raybestos, uh, Porter, uh, Porterfield, and then um, Faroda. They all make some uh, PFC really long lasting race pads for endurance racing. Those might last three or four times as long, but of course they cost, you know, three times as much money. So you just got to do the math and see what works. For me, casually doing a few a year, this is fine. These have a tremendous bite. Um, it's actually shocking. Uh, when I used these last f uh, winter or fall at VIR, I just my confidence in braking was so good. I mean, you could really brake late and know you were going to slow down. They were awesome. There's never any fade. I think these are good up to about 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is a lot. My brakes probably never get much over 1,000, uh, at least based on the temperature strips and things I've, um, and temperature paint on my rotors. But yeah, these are killer. Um, they also make one called RP1, which I tried, which is a lower bite pad kind of version of this. I didn't like it. Um, maybe if you had a really lightweight car. I just never felt, I just didn't feel as confident because I had to push the pedal really hard to stop and, or slow down, uh, which also allows... Uh, easier modulation or trail braking to come off of the brake pad these you barely touch it and you're you're basically stopped so the modulation on these may not be as good but i'll just take the confidence in knowing i can just get on the brakes and brake late and and be good so anyway rpx don't be scared of ebc these things are awesome um you know people using red stuff on the pad i mean that's a straight up ceramic street pad it's gonna melt um yellow stuff which was Probably missold for many years as kind of an entry-level tra track compound. It's not. It's just an aggressive street pad. I really like yellows. My son runs them on his um, car for autocross. I think yellows are a great aggressive street pad if you're driving a modified car. If you want to get into the colored pads, uh, the, the, base, the kind of base is blue stuff. That would be like entry-level track compound. Even some people report they have bad luck with those on track. I use their higher torque blue it's called ndx in the back because there's really not many choices for my small little 272 factory brakes and i have no issue with it um but yeah i think if you're going to mess with uh, ebc i think sticking to this rp line uh is the way to go again i i just couldn't believe how well these worked for what i paid so stainless steel backing plates um yeah they look good um again about 225 i'll go ahead and swap these in this week do a just a quick bleed, you know, six pumps from each caliper just to get uh, just to get fresh fluid and a hard pedal again and uh, be on my way to VIR.